Hello, everyone. So instead of pitching you my company today, I want to talk to you about something very important. And that is what makes a product exceptional. It's the experience. And the experience comes from design. Now, design is something that it's how it makes you feel. You know it when you see it. It's better than anything else you've ever used. Radically better, actually. Now, the problem is that design tools today, or tools overall, aren't adapted to the natural human thought process. And that's why all products aren't exceptional. But let, let me explain why. When you have an idea and a burst of energy, your mind doesn't think of that in the way of shapes and, and contrast and padding and layers. So instead, what we, what we do is that we start to adapt or frame our ideas related to those tools. And they start to frame our solutions as well. Now, that's very logical in some ways because it makes your thoughts more tangible. But what it also does is limit human creativity. Now, what happens next? You jump into the second diamond of the classic double diamond phase here that you see, which is the solution. And it's perfectly fine if you create an amazing solution. But if it doesn't solve a real problem, then it's completely irrelevant. So how can we get designers to spend more time in that first diamond, in the problem phase, understanding that right problem to solve. And the way to do that is to mirror their thought process. Now, designers think in multiple layers of abstraction. They work in multiple layers of abstraction mentally. And let's say that you move to your, your tool to visually represent your ideas or something that you want to, to share with stakeholders. That could be something that's high fidelity. It could be a wireframe. It could be a user flow or something else. In your mind, you're going from rough concepts to pixel perfect designs. You're going from user flows to micro interactions rather than one thing at a time. Now, in your mind as well, that's all connected. It's fluid. It flows. And these are the kind of stages that I was talking about here. So uh, whether you're going from something that's very abstract, we'll go through some examples in a moment, or you go through to something which is much more concrete. So if we can mirror the natural thought process, maybe we can unleash creativity. And yeah, super high level problem here. So we'll start with user needs. And in this example, sharing a photo with your friends. Um, you're going to turn that then into something which is a bit more tangible, like taking a photo all the way to showing confirmation. And probably this is within some form of app. And then there you'll get deeper into the interaction. So you want to understand actually how the user is moving through these different uh, flows. And remember at this point that nothing is connected. So especially when you get onto to something like detailed UI, um, if you change something, it impacts everything else that you've already done. Right? So we started to think, actually, how could AI help us solve this problem? And we discovered something amazing. And that is that AI can maintain context while you zoom in despite looking at different detail and representation of the same things in those abstraction layers that I mentioned, it can contain that, that um, context. So this is where the magic happens. And I'm going to show you how. So in this example that you see here, we're starting with a specification, a very specific one for onboarding in a user flow, uh, in a fitness app, sorry. <laughs> Um, and then from there, we're going to take that specification and we're going to instantly turn it into something uh, which is a very detailed user flow. And then we're going to expand a very specific step of that into more interactions, alternative paths, edge cases, error states. And all of these things are what makes the experience exceptional for the end user. And then we'll take a specific step from there. We'll turn it into a wireframe. And remember that context is being carried through each layer. Each layer informs the other. And then, of course, from wireframe to, to high fidelity. So, so what this process is doing is that it's mirroring the natural creative thought process that a designer has. It's reducing cognitive load in the process. And in fact, it's actually merging thought and creation to be the same thing. It's bridging that gap. Now. You hear this, you think, OK, but does that mean that AI is going to replace designers? And the answer to that is absolutely not. And as a side note, by designers, I mean uh, professional product designers working in commercial environments, building the products that we love and, and use every single day. Um, design is very much about understanding the right problem to solve 
and then iterating to find a, a solution, but all in the way that makes sense within a very complex organization. In other words, you might say that the most important part of design actually happens outside of the canvas. There's a couple of caveats to that, of course. I mean, uh, simple software like landing pages, e-commerce, or anything with very limited interactions. Yeah, pretty much anyone can create that already today. However, the quality will vary greatly depending on who is doing it and the purpose for it as well. So if we're moving from AI as a tool to AI as a thinking partner, and we're moving from automation to augmented thinking, and we've established that AI is not going to replace product designers, but it definitely will transform the creative industry. We are hiring. Join us and build the future of design. Thank you.